Alleluia. Somebody say Alleluia. Alleluia. Say it again. Say it like you mean it this morning. Alleluia. I'm not hearing you all. <laughs> yes. Alleluia. Lord, we praise you, God. Lord, you are worthy, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, on this Christmas morning, Lord, we remember, Father God. Lord, we remember, Lord, that you came, Lord, into the world, Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life, Father God. So, Lord, we remember this this morning. And, Lord, we thank you. Lord, for doing this work for us, God. Lord, even as the word, Lord, is shared this morning, Father God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would touch the hearts of the hearers this morning, Father God. Lord, that you would open, Lord, open our, our hearts, Lord, to your understanding, Lord, of your holy, Lord, your most holy and most precious word that is taken from the book of Hebrews. See my wife signaling me there. <laughs> The, the, the benefits of playing music and preaching, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. So Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5 this morning. Hallelujah. When all found, you could say amen. <laughs> right. I think we all found, right? Amen. And it says, for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the will to come, whereof we speak, Next verse. <laughs> Wherefore we speak. Right? But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. So he was in charge of everything. Uh, go back. <laughs> right? But now we see not yet all things put under him. Right? So, but now we see not yet all things put under him. So somehow man lost this authority that he had. Next verse. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. <clears throat> Next verse. Hallelujah. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Next verse. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children which God had given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that, thou, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but what he took, on him, the seed of Abraham. Next verse. Whereof in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. And next verse, and our final verse this morning. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Amen. Amen? Powerful scripture. Hallelujah. We thank God for, for Paul this morning. Paul wrote these words that we have just read there. 
very scholarly, <laughs> very well thought out, very well narrated. Right? Paul was Paul was 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 an amazing person. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we thank God for these words. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So this morning, I want to ask you a question. Do you know your value? Do you know your value? Do you know your value? And I, I don't want you to turn to your neighbor and ask them that. I want you to ask yourself that this morning. Do you know your value? Hallelujah. Wow. Do you know your value? You are so valuable to God. Amen? You are so valuable to God that God, when, when we were lost, when you were lost in sin, God made a way of escape from that. And you are so valuable to God that he came in the earth just like you and me. He did not choose to come as an angel. He did not choose to come with his heavenly power. But he came as a man, just like you and me. So we're going to look at this a little bit this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. If my... Ah, good. Right? So, he came how? Somebody said, how did he come? He came as a man. Amen? In verse 6 of the text this morning, let's just go back to verse 6. It says, one testified in a certain place saying, what is man? And this, this is Paul speaking these words, right? He's saying that someone somewhere through time testified saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? What is man? Who are you? Who am I? That God is mindful of him. Amen? Amen? Or the son of man that thou visitest him. Who are you? Who am I this morning? That God is mindful of us. Wow. That, that's, that's amazing. That God thinks about you. He has you on his mind. And the person, the certain person, you can leave it up, Kyra, the certain person who Paul is mentioning here that said this is the psalmist David. Right? And uh, some, somewhere, sometime we were speaking about David. I think it was in a, a, a little gathering that we had. Right? I see Brother Terran shaking his head. Right? David. A little shepherd boy that God took and made king. He was the lowliest in his family. He was the last person that anyone considered. But you know what? God considered him. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. God considered him. And God took him to this place. So that, that's why he was, he was saying here, you saying, who, who am I, Lord? What is man? That you are mindful of him. That you visited him. Wow. Hallelujah. And then he says, right, uh, uh, this is Paul quoting David, right? In the next verse, David is also saying, he said that you made, or you have made him a little lower than the angels. So we may not have the power that the angels have, right? And do some of the things that they could do. In that position or rank to God, we are a little lower than the angels, Right? But what? Even though God made us a little lower than the angels, he crowned us with glory. He crowned man with glory and honor, and he set him over the works of his hands. Wow. All of creation, everything in this world belonged to man. 
When God created Adam in the garden, everything, God said, dominion over everything is yours. The fish of the sea, the animals on the land, the beasts, right? I would often hear Pastor Atta mentioning some of his, 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 his I don't want to say old, <laughs> some of his former days in his glory when he would, when he would wrestle bulls, right? <laughs> right? Because why? Man has dominion over the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, is there some water? <laughs> uh, this is open. <laughs> oh, this is mine. Okay, perfect. Hallelujah. Man has dominion over the earth. Right? In verse 8, you subjected all things under his feet. For in, for in subjecting all things to him, he did not leave anything not subjected to him. Amen? But now we do not see all things being subjected to him. So now we see man has lost his estate, his position that he had. Hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. And you know why? Because the first man, as I mentioned before, the first man, Adam, gave that authority that he had. That dominion that he had, he was fooled, he was tricked into giving it over to the enemy, to the devil. Amen? Amen? Wow. And from there, God had set his plan in motion to rescue man from this state of separation from himself. So this is the root of everything. If you look at the book of Genesis in chapter 3, right, verse 15, it talks about what happened, some, some things, God made a statement after man fell. And he said, to the serpent, such and such. He said to the man, such and such. He said to the woman, such and such. Right? Woman, woman would bring forth children in labor. The man would have to till the ground and work for everything that he needs. Right? Not, not just one, but what you need, you have to work for. Right? And to the serpent, to the devil, right? Uh, he was given uh, dominion for a while over the earth. Because, he, because man handed it over to him. But what God said is that the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman, now which, which woman has seed? <laughs> right? But he says what? The seed of the woman will bash the head of the serpent he said, he said, you serpent, you, you will bruise his heel, but he will bash your head. In other words, the seed of the woman will triumph victoriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is who we are celebrating this morning. We are celebrating the very fulfillment of that scripture way back in the, in the beginning of time. So this is not something that happened thousands and thousands of years. It's, it's, it's not something uh, sudden. Jesus is coming. But it was foretold by God himself at the very beginning, right after man fell into sin. Hallelujah. 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 Now at Christmas time, we celebrate the very fulfillment of God's plan of redemption of mankind. And his plan did not involve sending the angels who have immense power. They have immense power. Angels have immense power. Right? But it involved he himself handling the stars. So how valuable must you and I really be for God to take this task upon himself? The salvation of mankind must have been a great monumental task 
for God himself to say, I will deal with this one. Wow. Hmm. And he did not come as an angel, but he came as a man, just like you and me. Wow. Hallelujah. So great, so valuable are you to God that he himself came. That is what we are celebrating this morning. His coming. Amen? Because when he came, he was able to grow into a man and die for you and me. And like Brother Robin said this morning, when you celebrate someone's birthday, you, you remember them. You celebrate them. You celebrate all the things that they would have done, all their accomplishments, the fact that they are in the world. And something just occurred to me. You don't celebrate the birthday uh, of a dead person. You celebrate the birthday of a living person. You would remember if someone has died. But you may not celebrate it as such. It would be a sad occasion. But when we celebrate Christmas, we are so excited. You go, you buy gifts. Amen? You get your kids excited. You are excited. You know, someone told me that Christmas is about your children. <laughs> because as we grow up, as we become adults, you know, we, 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 we get so caught up in life. But might I remind us this morning that Christmas is not just about buying gifts for our children and making them happy. But it is about the fact that Jesus came in the world and died for us. And not only that, but he was resurrected and he is alive today. Amen? And Brother Robin? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. So great and so valuable are you to God that when he saw us in this state that we had found ourselves, he said, I would handle this situation myself. So great, so valuable are you. Do you understand how valuable you are? And I could title my sermon that this morning. Do you understand how valuable you are? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If mankind could have reconciled themselves back to God, if we could have mended that separation that was not there between us and God, then we would have done so before Jesus came into the earth. But the devil had orchestrated it so good that no matter what man does, he just found himself drifting further and further, and further, and further. Look, look at how far we have drifted from God. Some believe that there is no God. So far we have drifted. So far. You know, it's like, it's like the, the, the hangman's noose. Right? He's tied. His hands are tied behind his back. And the more he struggles, it's the tighter that rope gets around his neck. It takes someone external from himself and someone with the authority to free him. And that person who has freed us is God himself. So what I would tell you is that Jesus Christ is God. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Let me move on quick this morning. Far and out of time. <laughs> right? In verse 9, it says that we see Jesus. Now, this is Paul, Paul Adam, right? And he's saying, But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the sufferings of death. Who is made a little lower than the angels? You and me, man. Right? Because David himself said that. Man, what is man that you are mindful of him? That to hear him, that you visit him. You have made him a little lower than the angels, but to give him dominion, which he has lost. 
And then he says, then Paul adds to this and he says, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. He was made a man just like you and me. Hallelujah. He was made a little lower than the angels and uh, a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for all. We were supposed to die. In fact, we were dead. We were eternally dead. Eternally separated from God. Eternally isolated from God. Amen? But Jesus came. Made a little lower than the angels like ourselves. Wow. And God crowned him with glory and honor. That by God's grace he should taste the death for every one of us. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things he created everything god jesus jesus was there in the beginning when god said let there be light jesus was there it was jesus who said that amen because he is god and it says for it became him in verse 10 for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons into glory to perfect the captain of their salvation through sufferings. Christ became, or Christ came into the world as a human being just like you and me. Hallelujah. God himself who created us, who created the world, who created everything in the world, who created the heavens above us, who created heaven where he lives, God himself who created the angels who, who are apparently at a little higher estate than us. <laughs> right? They have a little more power than us. Right? God himself who created everything came as a lowly man. Just like you and me. Amen? Wow. Hallelujah. He came as a man just like you and me, to save us from our state of separation. Amen? Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2 verse 7 says, And she brought forth a son. Right? Mary. Mary brought forth a son, the firstborn, and wrapped him and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. So you know something? Christ came as a man just like you and me. So how did he come? He came as a man. Amen? Hallelujah. But why? Why did he come as a man? Why didn't he come as an angel? Wow. Why? Hallelujah. And I'm getting some feedback this morning. Pastor Zolina is saying, he came as a man to save man, to redeem man. Amen? He chose not to come as an angel of amazing power, but as a man, like you and me. He emptied himself, and Paul himself said that somewhere. I can't remember exactly where, but he said that he emptied himself of his power. So all the power that Jesus had in heaven, because he is the son of God, he is God himself, he created the earth. Think about all, how much power is required. How much energy is required to create you alone. Think about how intricate you are. Your design. And then multiply that by the, 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 the almost 2 billion people that are in the earth. Is it 2? Yeah. 7. Wow. <laughs> right? Multiply that by the entire human race and then think about how intricate our world is created. And not only this, but think about all the planets that are in our solar system, the sun, right? And scientists are discovering that there are many solar systems, there are many universes, galaxies, 
And God created all of that. And he, who is this great, vast thing, right? Because we can't understand him fully. We know he's a person. We know he has a personality. Because you know why we know that? Because we have a relationship with him now. But if we didn't, we wouldn't understand that. We wouldn't even begin to fathom how great God is. And you know something? He valued you. This little speck of dust in his whole vast creation that he made. He valued you so much that he decided that he will save you from being eternally separated from him. Wow. Because he wants you to live with him forever. God enjoyed his company with Adam in the garden. And he missed that. Wow. Hallelujah. In verse 10 it says, For it became him, for whom are all things made, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons into glory, to perfect the salvation, uh, to perfect the captain of their salvation through sufferings. In verse 11, For both he who sanctifies and they who are sanctified, Jesus is the one who sanctifies, and we are the one who are sanctified, we are all become one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brothers. That is how much God values you. That he came to be one with you. Amen? And what that means is that he came to identify with you. To feel what you feel. That, that's why scripture says that he is touched with the very feelings of our infirmities. Whatever pain, whatever sickness, whatever you are going through. Your financial problems. Whatever it is. Whatever is on your heart this morning. It could be your husband. It could be your wife. It could be a, a son, a daughter. Whatever you are going through, God knows and understands. You know why? Because he came just like you and me. Hallelujah. That is why he understands. He came so that he could be one with us. So that he could be as our brother. Jesus is the one that understands. That identifies with everything that we're going through. And so God is not this foreign thing to us anymore. But we have this close connection with him. We have this close connection with God. We have, we have the opportunity to have a relationship with God. The great God who created all of universe. We are just a mere speck in this. Wow. And we have the opportunity to have a relationship with that. God is greater than the prime minister. God is greater than the president. God is greater than the Queen of Britain. God is greater than the President of the United States. And we have the privilege to have a relationship with Him. And it is not a one-way relationship. It is a two-way relationship. No marriage could survive if it is just one way. It has to be twofold. It has to be two ways. Communication has to go to and from. And that is the kind of relationship that we have with God. Amen? No friendship could survive. Amen? Wow. So he came, why? Why he came as a man? To be one with us. To be as our brother. In verse 14 it says, Since then the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise partook of the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil and deliver those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This is why he came as a man. For truly he did not take the nature of angels, but he took hold of the seed of Abraham. Therefore in all things it behoved him to be made like his brothers. God is your brother. Wow. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that statement. How could God be my brother? I am a lonely man. A lowly man, sorry. Amen? 
I'm not alone, yeah, do, do better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God came like a brother to us that he might be a merciful and faithful priest and the things pertaining to God to make propitiation or reconciliation or gaining back God's favor. This is the reason why he came as a man, right? For the sins of his people. For in that he himself has suffered, having been tempted, he is able to rescue those who are being tempted. So God came as a man, firstly, to be one with us, to be our brother. And he came so that he could understand what it means to be tempted. He came as a man so that he could be tempted as a man. And in being tempted as a man, he could perfectly overcome it. And show us how. So you could overcome your temptation. You could do that. Whatever you are fighting with. Whatever I am fighting with. We are all men. We are all human beings. And God showed us that we could overcome anything. Any temptation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ came as a man so that he could understand what it means to be tempted. What it means to be tempted. He fully understands everything that you are going through. Amen? Hallelujah. Not only did he come as a man to be one with us and to be our brother and to understand temptation, but man's blood, human blood, and not just human blood, but his human blood, had to be shed for man to be saved. Amen? If you look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 18 to 26, you could write it down. Yeah, I wouldn't let us turn. If, if Sister Kara gets it, that's okay. Right? It says, so even the first covenant was inaugurated with blood. And we, we, we are going through that right now in Bible study. Right? In the book of Exodus where the first covenant is given to Moses. And so sacrifices and stuff are being set up. Right? And it says, and, and, and Paul is saying, so even the first covenant was inaugurated with blood. For when Moses had spoken every command to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats uh, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and he sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, right? And he said that this is the blood of the covenant that God has commanded you to keep. And both the tabernacle and all the utensils of worship, he likewise sprinkled with blood. Blood it was important. Right? Indeed, according to the law, right? Paul is saying this. Indeed, according to the law, almost everything was purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins or there is no forgiveness. So it was necessary for the sketches of the things to, in heaven... To be purified with these sacrifices. But the heavenly things themselves required a better sacrifice. Or required better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with hands. Right? The representation of the true sanctuary. But into heaven itself. And now he appears in God's presence for us. And he did not enter to offer himself again and again. The way that the high priest enters the sanctuary year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But now he has appeared once and for all. Wow. Once and for all. At the consummation of the ages to put away sin by his sacrifice. Wow. Christ came as a man so that the blood of a man could be shed. Hallelujah. Not just the blood of any man. And I heard Sister Alana mention something this morning. She referred to Jesus as the God man. You know why? Because God is not... Oh, Jesus was not 50% man, 50% God. He was 100% God 
and a hundred percent man. You work out that much. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was all God and he was all man. That is why he could understand everything you went, you go through as a man. And he could show us how to have a relationship with God. Because he was 100% God, 100% man. The best mediator that we could ever have back to God was Jesus. Or is Jesus. Do you understand how valuable you are? Do you understand how precious and how magnificent Jesus really is? Wow. Hallelujah. The blood of man had to be shed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it was not just the blood of any man, but the blood of God as a man. The God man. And when he died on the cross, his blood was not tainted. His blood not, was not tainted with sin since he entered the world divinely through Mary without any human male interaction or intercourse. Right? Making his blood free from sin. And that is the importance of the virgin's birth and believing that Mary was a virgin when Jesus was born. That is the importance because it shows that Jesus was born sin free. He was a man. He was, he had blood. He understands everything. He felt sin, but he was born without sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ happened this way. While his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Not through a, a, a human man. Through the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1 verse 35 says, The angel reply, replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Do you understand the significance of these verses that we read year after year every Christmas time? It shows that God, Jesus, his blood was innocent. When he went to that cross, his blood was innocent. But you know something? He took your sin and he took my sin upon himself. So that you and I could be free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the one that would reconcile man back to God will enter the world not just as a man like you and me. But a sinless man. That is very important. He did not just enter like you and me. But he entered as a sinless man. Born of a virgin. The only, the only being that was born of a virgin was Jesus. Every birth that happened before that and after that was not a virgin's birth. <laughs> Amen? The only person who entered the earth sinless was Adam. Because God created Adam initially before he fell into sin and before his blood became tainted God created him sinless. Adam knew what it meant to not feel the effects of sin when God now created him. He knew what it was like to have a relationship with God before being separated or cut off from God because of sin. And Jesus is the only person after that who came into the earth, well, apart from Eve, <clears throat> Jesus is the only other man who came into the earth sinless after Adam. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the same way that Adam's blood became tainted with sin is the same way that Jesus' blood could have become tainted with sin. All he had to do was give in. All he had to do was give in to temptation. All he had to do was give into sin. And you know what would have happened? You and I would not be here. We would all be doomed forever. And the Son of God would have been doomed too. Wow. 
what's a, a gloomy a gloomy uh, situation that would have been but you know what he did not he did not give into temptation he did not give into sin but he conquered it hallelujah he got over that hallelujah so that when he went on that cross to die he could take your sin and my sin and he could be condemned for your sake and my sake hallelujah the baby whose birth we celebrate this morning will grow up to be the magnificent god man that would make reconnection back to god possible so how he came he came as a man why he came so that he could be one with us so that he could be our brother so that he could understand temptation and because sinless human blood was needed to redeem us amen so what now what will you do with this information that i have given to you this morning what now what now you can have all this information information is good but one day you will stand before god and he will say what have you done with my only begotten son this great god man this great person that came and made a way for you to have a relationship with the one god when god appeared to, to moses he said i am god the same god that everybody is trying to find that everybody is searching to find god he said i am god and jesus came to make a, re, a, a connection between you and and the god possible that is who god is what are you going to do in romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 paul says that if you believe right if you sorry if you if you confess with your mouth that jesus is is god and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved you'll be saved from the state of sin that you in, that you are in so what are you going to do with 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 this great phenomenal uh thing that jesus did for mankind hallelujah in verse 10 of romans chapter 10 it says for with the heart one believes and thus has righteousness and with the mouth one confesses and thus has salvation hallelujah all you have to do is believe all you have to do is believe and not just believe but confess because when you confess something it shows that you do believe it there are many who say that they believe but they are afraid to confess it because deep down in their heart they are not sure if they believe so that is why confession is so important for with the heart man believe it unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation wow jesus said that if we are ashamed to confess him now then he will be ashamed of us before his father in heaven amen so once you believe and confess you can continue to cultivate this relationship with god you can continue to cultivate this relationship that you have started and that god has started with you with the one who created you with the one that created the universe amen we could hear what he wants us to know through his holy word through the bible amen we could hear what he says to us apparently it's nine o'clock right yeah we could hear what he says to us by conversing with him in prayer we are really 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 privileged 
We are so privileged. Do you know how valuable you are? Do you understand how valuable you really are to God? We are so privileged to have this ability to be one with God. Wow. To be as his brother. To be his brother. Imagine Jesus. God calls you his brother. God called Abraham his friend. He said, my friend Abraham, I need to go and talk to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah. Imagine that. God was seeking Abraham for his counsel. That's the kind of relationship God wants to have with you. Hallelujah. So what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? With this information that I have given you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Oh yes. Yes, Holy Spirit, move. Yes. Lord, we thank you, God. You are so worthy. You are so worthy this morning, God. Lord, we remember, Lord, everything that you did. Lord, we remember, Lord, that you came. Lord, as a lowly man, just like us, Father God. Lord, so that we could be free from sin. So that we could be eternally connected back to you, God. Lord, this morning, Lord, as your word, Lord, went unto the hearts of the hearers this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would touch Holy Spirit. Touch some heart. Lord, make someone understand how much you really value them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to do so this morning, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me this morning. I know we have online viewers and probably a hundred years down the road someone will be listening to this video on YouTube and if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior just say these words say Lord Jesus and, and we could repeat it here this morning Lord Jesus I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness I acknowledge that you came as a man just like me you understand my hurt you understand my temptations you understand everything that bothers me and Lord Lord Jesus I place everything into your hand and I accept that you came as a man just like me that you died and you rose again so that I can be free so I invite you into my heart right now and I pray that you would clean me up and make me whole make me free I thank you for doing this work in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Come on, we could do better than that. God is good. We thank God for the word. Amen. The word of God went forth with power and with authority. He took upon him the seed of Abraham. Amen? Amen. We do. We have the seed of Abraham. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, this God we are serving is so great. So, so great. You know, the seed of the woman will bruise his head. Give him a blow, man. You know, this is the kind of power we have. Praise the Lord. The word, the seed of the woman, that is Jesus, will bruise the serpent's head. So when he get that, you see, when he went to the cross, yes, he was bruised all on his heel. But when he went to the cross and he went to the grave, 
and he rose again. That is where victory came. Amen. He bruised his head. He gave him a blow. So there's people serve Jesus. God is good. God is good. God is good. Thank you, Lord. I love the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You value yourself. You are so valuable to God. We could do so much more. Hallelujah. So much more. 2022 is coming. Yes, we're passing this one. But you see, the next one, let us do more for God. Amen. Whatever we do for God will last. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's our leader. He's our model. Hallelujah. He's our, um, you know, uh, it, it's so ironic that um, oh, yes, night, yes, we, are, we have in our service, people, right? We are starting at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m., and we're going to 12. And um, yes, we will have praise and worship. We will have prayer time. You, those of you that are viewing with us, we will have prayer time for you and for your family. We will designate different people to pray. So we will have a time of prayer and we will have the word. And I, Brother Christian, touch on some of the word that will be coming, coming forth. Jesus, he is the commander in chief. The commander in chief. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's our model. He's everything to us. But the word of God will be coming forth. So it will be a packed program. So get yourself excited. Yes, I know all yes night people love to wait until 12 o'clock. So get yourself ready. You will be zooming with us. There will be prayer time and everything. So yes, you will be on. Amen. So God is good. God is good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all stand. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're lifting up our hands this morning. Thank you, Lord. And I know prayer went for you already. You that viewing with us. Amen. I want you to keep sharing the light. Share with somebody. This is how you will evangelize. Don't just log on and you say you are alone there. Share the light. Share it. Share, share. When you come on, on, on um, all year's night, 10 p.m., yes, share the light. Somebody will be blessed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for your people, O oh God, that took the time off to come, O oh God, and sit at your feet, sit in your presence. Father God, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless your people. Bless those that view it was viewing with us, Lord. Bless them, cover them. Today is Christmas. This is the day we celebrate Jesus. Let this time of celebration be one of peace, oh God. Goodwill unto all men. Hallelujah. So, Father, this morning, we thank you again for your people. We thank you for this Christmas season, Lord. We thank you for blessings. We thank you for those, oh God, in many different homes. There is sadness, Lord. But God, you're, you are able, Lord, to touch, oh God, your people this morning. You are able to touch the, the homes, oh God. You are able to touch lives this morning, Father. So, Almighty God, let today, Lord, be a day, oh God, of reflection, oh God, for those, oh God, that are sad, Lord, knowing, Lord, that there is a Jesus, oh God, that love them. There's somebody that paid a price for them. So, Almighty God, we give you all the praise, all the thanks, oh God, in Jesus' precious and holy name. And we say, God bless you this morning. Amen. So, tomorrow, please, God, we would not have no service. But yes, we are coming. We are coming on all year's night, 10 p.m. And we want to see you. Amen. So, God bless you. Praise the Lord. God for the word this morning. Amen. The word went out. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to all this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen.